What happens when a recruiting site accurately predicts the NFL draft? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to another recruiting throwback video. Sorry for this. Oh, this is a, you can actually see this, huh? Yeah, guys, I'm not I'm not even going to lie. I I drooled on myself. I, I was doing something with my teeth and then I don't know, but um I apologize for that. Just going back looking through what did some of these recruiting sites actually get basically 100% accurate when it comes to where they ranked high school players in basketball, in football? And a good example of this is like Jadavian Clowney, you guys can see he was rated 1,000 overall and he did go number one overall. I would consider that to be 100% accurate. We're just going to go through some cool examples of it. It's really interesting with some of these uh, high school basketball players because some of these sites are so crazy accurate. But another good example is Trevor Lawrence. So you guys see Trevor Lawrence actually didn't receive a perfect 1,000 rating. Every recruiting site except ESPN had him at the number one overall player. ESPN had Justin Fields in front of him. He should have had a perfect rating. I mean, Trevor Lawrence is literally the god prospect. The, like, guaranteed number one overall pick. He's big. He's mobile. He's athletic. He won a freaking national championship as a freshman. But he still was the number one overall recruit. And he ended up getting picked first overall three years later. So that, that kind of stuff is pretty cool. That's what I'm going to be looking at. Another good example, Ed Oliver. How about a five-star going to the University of Houston? He was the number six overall player, and in 2019, he got drafted at ninth overall. I would consider that to be pretty accurate. Ed Oliver had such an interesting college career. When he was a sophomore, everyone was saying, this is the next Khalil Mack. He's going to be the number one overall pick, and it just... His junior year was a little bit of a letdown at Houston. He goes at number nine overall in the NFL draft to the Bills. And I think his pro career, I mean, it's been a little bit of a letdown. The number ninth overall pick, you would have to consider that. Derek Brown, the number nine overall player, commits to Auburn University. What a big recruiting win that was, getting a big boy defensive tackle. He actually ended up getting drafted I believe seventh overall. I looked this up because I could have sworn that Derek Brown was picked at number nine overall. And I saw him in the recruiting rankings at number nine. And I'm like, that's perfect for this video. Number nine to number nine, literally 100% accurate. But apparently he was drafted seventh overall. I do not remember that. I vividly remember, I don't know if it, I had like a dream or something. I vividly remember the Carolina Panthers drafting Derrick Brown at number nine overall, but he went, I, I believe he went seventh overall, but still, that's really close. If you're a recruiting service, you rank a guy ninth overall, three years later, he gets drafted seventh overall. That is really accurate. This is a really interesting one. Jeffrey Simmons. Jeffrey Simmons commits to Mississippi State. He's ranked as the number 18 overall player. And he gets drafted at number 19 overall in 2019. That is really, really cool. And you want to talk about pinpoint accuracy. You go from the 18th overall player to being drafted 19th overall. That is pretty crazy. Jeffrey Simmons from Mississippi State. Here's another really good one. Josh Rosen. Josh Rosen was the number 11 overall player. He gets drafted at 10th overall. We know the story with Josh Rosen. Uh, but still, you know, going from 11 to 10th, his pro career, it hasn't worked out. It was a bad situation, but let's be real. The guy just can't play. I mean, literally, he, Josh Rosen seriously can't play. Uh, and then this was really cool, I thought, as well. You've got Kayvon Thibodeau at the number two overall player. Derek Stingley at number three. We know that Thibodeau ended up getting drafted I'm fifth overall, I want. Yeah, fifth overall because Evan Neal went seventh. I'm, I'm refreshing my draft mind. Evan Neal went seventh. So Thibodeau goes 
from the second overall player to being drafted fifth overall. Stingley, Stingley goes from the number three overall player to being drafted third overall. So he literally goes from number three to number three. Literally perfect accuracy. We know that there's a lot of busts and things like that, but you'll also get rankings like this and it's so fun to see this stuff that's why we all love five stars guys we all love them Evan Neal there's another great example Evan Neal wait Evan Neal was drafted seventh overall or was Evan Neal drafted fifth did Thibodeau I believe Thibodeau was drafted fifth overall guys i Yes, Evan. so Evan Neal goes from 7 to 7. He was the number 7 overall player in the country, and then he gets drafted at 7th overall. And people, you know, they get angry at me. They say the recruiting rankings don't matter. They matter. They're legitimate. I want all the 5 stars. Feed me. Five, I love 5 stars, guys. I love 5 stars. DeAndre Swift. He was a borderline 5 star. Just did crack. The Barrier, he was a legit 5-star, number 33 overall player from Pennsylvania. Oh, if you're Penn State, you got to hate that if you're Penn State, DeAndre Swift. The reason I have him on this list, though, I'm literally Googling him to make sure where he was drafted. Yeah, DeAndre Swift was drafted 35th overall. So he goes from being ranked the number 33 overall player to being drafted at 35. That is pretty cool. That is extremely accurate. You love seeing stuff like that. Mark Sanchez, shout out. Here's a little throwback, the number three overall player. This kid actually, Mark Sanchez actually said he almost was going to go to Ohio State. I remember that in a story he said that. But Mark Sanchez, the number three overall player, he ends up going in the NFL draft at number five overall. So I, you could say that's pretty accurate. Uh, and then there's, a, so we're now we're getting into some NBA ones. LeBron James, I mean, come on, let's be real. Anyone could have done this. He gets the perfect 1,000 rating. He skips high school. He gets drafted fourth overall. The next year, Dwight Howard, class of 2004, gets the perfect 1,000 overall rating. Skips uh, college. Did I say skip heights? Skips college and then gets drafted first overall. So LeBron and Dwight Howard back-to-back Perfect 1,000 rankings, perfect number one overall player. They go straight to the draft, and they become the number one overall pick. But this is probably the best example of recruiting rankings being 1,000% accurate. We had this happen. The Holy Trinity, the top three overall players in the correct order, Cade Cunningham, he became the number one overall pick. He was the number one overall player. Jalen Green, he became the number two overall pick. He was the number two overall player. Evan Mobley, he became the number three overall pick. The Holy Trinity, he was the number three overall player. This is the most accurate thing. They got the correct top three players all in a row. And all of these guys were one and dones. Jalen Green didn't even play. How are you going to go to professional? What are these kids doing? Go to college. Get laid by chicks. There's NIL money. You're going to professional, you know, going on buses every day to leagues just so you can get a million dollars. You'll get that money on a college campus. Why do kids, why do these college or uh, high school kids like this professional route? It's so, going to a college campus is so much better. It's such, it's way better luxury and you probably make more money now. I just don't know why Jalen Green would do professional. I hate the professional thing. I hate it so much. But still guys, this is the holy trendy. You got the number one overall pick, the number two overall pick, and the number three overall pick. And then some more examples. With NBA, there's definitely like more... Trevor Lawrence type prospects were like Trevor Lawrence it was guaranteed even when he was in high school like he was going to be the number one overall pick like Andrew Wiggins is another one even though Andrew Wiggins disappointed a little bit at Kansas everyone knew he was going to be the number one overall pick and he has you know he's had considering his hype he's had a disappointing career in the NBA he randomly started the All-Star game this year not sure why but um yeah he was the number one overall player rated a perfect thousand Anthony Davis is another example, rated 99999, uh, and he was the number one overall player. He went first overall. This was a, a pretty impressive feat. 
You've got the top three players. I believe this is the class of recruiting class of 2009. So you've got Derek Favors. He became the third overall pick in the draft. You've got John Wall. He was the number one overall pick in the draft. And then DeMarcus Cousins, I believe, was the fifth overall pick. So very uh, impressive there. They didn't have the correct order. But you've got the number three overall pick, the number one overall pick, the number five overall pick as the top three players. That is very accurate. That is a good job. And then this might be even more impressive. They correctly predicted Greg Oden, the number one overall player, going first overall in front of Kevin Durant, who was the number two overall player. And he ended up going second overall. That's pretty sweet as well. You've also got in terms of the or in terms of yeah, college. Vince Young, the number one overall prospect, one of the you know the, one of the only quarterbacks to ever be rated perfect 1,000. He ends up becoming the number one overall pick, so they got that exactly right. And then this class, what I thought was done really well. You know, obviously Derrick Rose was the number one overall pick. He was the he was rated the fifth player, but Kevin Love, top five pick. Michael Beasley, he stayed an extra year, but he became a top two pick. OJ Mayo was selected third overall. Eric Gordon was seventh overall. I looked back and Eric Gordon was seventh. So this isn't 100% legit, but you've got the seventh overall pick at number one, the third overall pick at number two, a second overall pick at number three. Kevin Love was like, I think a top five pick. And then Derrick Rose was the number one overall pick. So that was pretty impressive. And then I wanted to do this like looking forward to the next uh, draft. How are these recruiting services positioned in terms of their accuracy for the next draft? So Brian Bracey, the number one overall player, we expect him to be drafted within the first top 10 picks. That's where he's getting mocked, but he does need to stay healthy. He's got to stay healthy. Bryce Young, clearly going to be a top three pick. The furthest I see him falling right now is number three. He would be behind C.J. Stroud and Will Anderson. But you could also see, an, uh, there's a lot of interesting quarterback prospects. But Bryce Young, let's be real, this is the Heisman winner. He's very likely going to be a top five pick. Julian Fleming, he might be a bust. So Julian Fleming, he's got to stay healthy. He, this could be such a huge year for him at Ohio State. Ohio State is loaded with receivers, but that one is iffy, very iffy. He needs to stay healthy. He's had injuries his first two years. Ringo, he should be a first-round pick, but top five, I don't see that. Maybe top ten. This is the kid that clinched the national title for Georgia when he had that pick six at the end of it. That's who this kid was. And then Gilbert. He's a bust. He's a. I, I believe he's transferred back to Georgia. If I have that, but he like transferred to Georgia and then he got kicked off the team and now he's back on the team. Maybe I got that wrong. I don't know. But either way, he is dealing with some issues and he tra Wait, did he go back to LSU? This kid like did some weird things in the transfer portal. He like went to the transfer portal, went back to LSU then went to Georgia, then went back to LSU, now he's back at Georgia. I swear to you guys, that's what he did. If that's what I thought he did, I don't know. Kid's a wacko. Uh, and then looking at the NBA, so the NBA draft lottery, we'll see. Chet Holmgren, I think he's going to be the number one overall pick, but it depends on the fit. Depends, you know, who, who wins the lottery. The lottery hasn't happened yet. It, it's, you know, taking place. Um... Paolo Burke, man, I don't know how to pronounce that dude's name. I never do. He should be a top two pick. The kid from Duke, maybe a top three pick, so they got that right. And then this Sharp kid is currently being mocked inside of the top five at like the fifth or sixth pick. I looked it up. So that's three pretty good things. And then Hardy, that kid ruined his career by going professional. You're going to ruin your career by doing that. You really are. But guys, when it comes to the most accurate Kate, they actually had it. Cade Cunningham became the number one overall pick. Jalen Green, the number two overall pick. Evan Mobley, the number three overall pick. That is impressive. And then I would say when it comes to football, I think the Jeffrey Simmons thing is pretty cool. I mean, he was ranked 18th overall. He went number 19. That That's pretty cool. And then also Thibodeau and Derek Stingley, as well as Evan Neal. Wait, Evan Neal went number five. The thing about it is... The thing about it, yeah, yeah F, F, oh, yes, no, 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 I remember now, I remember, I remember, wait a minute, 
No, I think Thibodeau did. Guys, I'm looking. I, I can't keep doing this. I have to stop. I have to stop doing this. How do I not remember? I have no... Kayvon Thibodeau. Can I look him up? Can I look his name up, please? I'm sorry. How do I not remember this? Did Kayvon Thibodeau go number five? Kayvon Thibodeau went number five. It took me a year to look it up, but I got it. So Evan Neal was correct. So these recruiting sites, guys... You want the five stars, they're accurate. I'm telling you, it's impressive what these recruiting sites have done. Yeah, there's going to be some busts. It's fun to look back on him, but this stuff is very good, and they're getting more accurate. They're getting more data every year. It's getting better, and it's really fun to see it progress and get to the point where, you know, we've got 10 or 11 first round picks this past year being former five stars. That's how they're getting very accurate with the NFL draft and the NBA, the top of the line. The Chet Holmgrens, you know. They're going to be top two, top three picks. Uh, but guys, that is going to do it for this video, this recruiting throwback video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.